Dominic, fantastic to get you on Real Vision. Pleasure to be here. Um, you guys kind of exploded onto the scene this year. But before we go into what you're up to, because I've got tons of questions, I'd love to get to your story. Where did you, where did you come from? How did you get into all of this? Well, you know, I've, for my sins, I've been building tech as an entrepreneur for a long time. Um, and I've been coding now for many decades. I started as a child. And I actually came to America with a computer game. Um, it was an MMO. I'm not a games entrepreneur, but I ended up building this thing because I had young kids at the time and I was kind of building it for them. And, uh, you know, I raised venture capital in the US and in California. And so I came over with the game. And eventually, you know, I, I wanted to move on from that. And, uh, you know, Bitcoin had always been on the sort of periphery of my vision, but I started getting more engaged. And, you know, by the end of 2013, I was convinced to move full-time to crypto. Um, and then, you know, during 2013, I was mainly just playing around with Bitcoin. And, and then by the end, I wanted to create a, uh, a cryptocurrency for the games industry um, that would enable people to buy and sell virtual goods within games and move value between games. And quickly became apparent, of course, that traditional cryptocurrency couldn't support the kind of transaction throughput or the rapid finality that would be needed. And so I started researching how that could be speeded up, um, spent 2014 doing that. And uh, originally I was just looking into um, traditional uh, consensus science and seeing how it could be adapted. Um, I was also very interested in, in scaling because um, with this game, it was called Fight My Monster. Um, we had to devise a lot of very interesting distributed systems to support um, interactivity between the users, we, we grew to more than three, 3 million users. Um, so I was interested, interested both in, you know, in improving the speed of blockchains and enabling them to scale. And I, I began to get involved with the Ethereum project. And you know, this, I came across this idea about a world computer and it just hit me right between the eyes. I, I thought that's just marvelous. You know, we could have a world computer that's created by a decentralized network. And we could all build on it um, in this sort of seamless universe um, for software that blockchains provide. And so I, I became very enamored by this idea of a world computer. And then I started looking more closely at smart contracts. And you know, the, the early version of smart contracts were really quite basic. And, um, but I saw that Smart contract software or software running on a blockchain was really a completely new kind of software, you know, a profoundly new kind of software. And it was also um, vastly superior. Um, I mean, there are a bunch of reasons, you know, smart contracts run on open networks. And I thought, well, it'd be much better if we could all build on an open network rather than on legacy IT using servers and cloud services and things. So that was pretty cool. Uh, then I saw that you know, smart contracts are tamper-proof. You don't need a firewall to protect smart contracts. The blockchain guarantees that smart contract software, when it's invoked, always runs the, the correct code against the correct data. And we can see the consequences of you know, traditional legacy IT not doing that. There's a sort of ongoing rolling security meltdown. Most recently, we've seen these terrible um, solar winds hacks and the Colonial Pipeline ransomware attack, which actually deprived the uh, eastern sort of seaboard of the US of fuel. You know, it was pretty serious and pretty dramatic. And of course, this is just gonna continue to get worse because when you build with legacy tech, it's always insecure. It's only a matter of degree. You can, you know, you can put firewalls around it and have security teams, but it's always insecure. It's just a matter of degree. And sooner or later, you'll make a mistake, and the hacker just jumps, will just jump over the firewall and install ransomware or steal all your data or whatever it's going to be. So okay, so smart contracts run on a public network. You don't need, you know, uh, less proprietary services like you know the cloud to 
to run your systems anymore. Um, software on a blockchain is tamper-proof. Uh, you don't need a firewall to protect it. Um, it's unstoppable. And of course, the internet computer is designed to withstand a nuclear strike um, just in the same way the internet uh, is. I mean, the, a lot of the early packet switching stuff in the 60s was um, driven by the Cold War. Um, so that's great too. I mean, you know, humanity depends on information systems for its survival. You know, I, I forget what the world population is. It's about 8, 8 billion people or something by now, yeah, roughly. give or take a few. And there's just no way of supporting that population without an awful lot of automation um, that's performed by computers. And as we increasingly depend upon information systems, everything from you know, enterprise systems that run supply chains through to um, social media, which we increasingly use to interact and um, manage and initiate personal relationships through. It's very important that um, these information systems become unstoppable. But then there are even more interesting aspects to smart contracts. Uh, smart contracts exist within a single seamless universe that the hosting blockchain provides for them. And within that universe, any smart contract can plug into any other smart contract. So um, you have these, the potential for these tremendous network effects and um, it becomes possible to build new systems very easily. So for example, you know, if you, if you uh, um, install a smart contract, um, you know, I, I, um, with permission, I can, I, can, I can put a smart contract on the blockchain that just calls directly into it. And not only that, smart contracts are simultaneously software and systems, running systems at the same time. So you can build um, running systems in the same way that you used to build software by combining these smart contracts. And it, another extraordinary dimension of this is that one smart contract can be part of many different systems at once. And I saw this would create just immense network effects and create all kinds of um, potential for collaboration that doesn't really exist today. And then lastly, of course, uh, smart contracts can be autonomous. That is, they can run without a human owner or an organization behind them. And they can either just be installed and be left there um, independently, or, or, or they can be placed under the control of some kind of tokenized governance system, which can update them. And when software runs autonomously on a blockchain, it inherits the properties of a blockchain. It really becomes um, part of the blockchain itself. And this means, of course, that it can create and process tokens. And I believe tokenization is going to be extraordinarily important um, to the future of society. Hey, if you like this clip, be sure to check out the full interview and more only on realvision.com forward slash crypto. It's 100% free. Sign up now.